Giga Texas has 62 hectares of floor space, and it's 61% done. I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla Weekend. Yes, it's been a rainy, nasty week in Austin, Texas, but the future birthplace of your Cybertruck shows no signs of slowing down. And while it only looks like a 1% gain from last week, it's actually 1.3%. And with how much is walled off, the interior alone is now ticking up by over half a percent per week. So it's going to get a lot more exciting before it quiets down. Here's the graph showing the weekly change in regards to each aspect of the site. The footings jumped quite a bit before the storm rolled in, with a lot of new work done in the central corridor. This could hit 95% of the site within the next few weeks, and once it does, it will count twice since it will be bumping up the site prep figure as well as the footings. The frame continued its pace despite completing the northwest corner. Some of this is captured by an adjustment to the count in the southwest prairie. This grid assumes every square has the same dimensions, but that isn't the case. If we count from north to south, it looks about right, maybe overcounted by a row, but if we count south to north, you'll see it's undercounted by at least three rows. This will wiggle out in the wash in coming weeks. The roof is going on quickly and only counts for half since the finished roof is a separate matter from just rough roofing. Rather than counting it on its own, I've been counting it as finished at the same pace as interior work for the second half. This likely leads to an undercount, but finished roof is often subject to changes and rework, and this method helps to smooth out the S-curve and keep the completion date from bouncing around too much. We may see the roof slowing considerably since most of it is covered. The interior space is still accelerating and will continue to do so for at least another month when the first walled off sections finish their 17 week march from closed off to completion. Each square counted here counts as one and a half squares since the interior stuff drags up the roof count with it. If you have questions about the methodology and want to dig deeper, check out the previous videos in this series and you'll find all the answers. Or if you don't have four hours to invest, I don't know, ask politely below. And if you have the answers, you know, feel free to provide them, but also politely. So let's take a look at the site as it appears today and roll it back to December 14th and go through it week by week. The orange is the footings, the gray is the frames, the dim gray is the roofs, which we only count half of until the interior work catches up, and the blue indicates interior areas walled off sufficiently to count towards completion. Once an area is counted toward interior completion, it begins a 17-week march towards being fully counted, with a fraction of it each week until it's done. The darker the blue, the more floors there are, and the black lines indicate fire breaks within the structure, with the heavier black lines indicating a concrete area. We've got four more important things coming up in the video, so please don't tune out just yet. We'll be looking at the projected completion with all the math surrounding that, the progress on the two new areas of the construction site, how the projection has changed over time with a much better graph to show it, and some insights on when it will actually be finished apart from that math. But first, allow me five seconds to thank my Patreons who get early access, an ad-free experience, bonus content, and help keep the channel running for as little as a buck a month. I can't do this without you guys. So here it is, and here you go. Giga Texas is 61% finished and will be complete, for lack of a better word, after 505 days of total construction on or about December 7th of this year. If you want to see the floor count, here you go. And if you want to see how many square feet that is per floor, here's that as well. There are over 6.6 .6 million square feet framed up which is 620,000 square meters, or 62 hectares of floor space. 
So I spent some time this week coming up with a better way to visually represent how much time has passed and how the projected completion has worked over time. So here's a look at that. Had to hand code this in JavaScript, so it took a bit more time than I'd hoped, but updating it should be a breeze. If I find a place to put this, I'll do it. When the tracker started, yeah, four months on that side and a year remaining. And you can see each week, not too bad, not too bad. Uh, over here, this is when the storms hit in January. And this section, where the dates get all the way back into September, was when I was uh, there was a math error and I was accidentally counting the roofs twice. Once corrected, we get back out and everything since, ooh, what is this, uh, middle of February, since then, everything has been mid-November to early December and awfully darn consistent, regardless of weather and changes. So that's pretty good. So let's talk turkey on this one, because it's gonna speed up here shortly, because the interior space is moving along and just keeps adding on, but that doesn't mean it'll be done-done even by the end of this year. Since interior space lags behind walls going up by 17 weeks, at least if Shanghai's first two phases can be considered representative, the factory can't hit 100% until 17 weeks from the point that the last wall goes up. So that leaves us with 11 weeks from now to get the walls up, all of them, every last one. What I think is more likely is that we'll get to, you know, 95, 96% and then kind of trail for another month or two, but we shall see. The body in white area will easily be closed off in the next 11 weeks since its walls are going up now. The general assembly area could get there or awfully close. The central corridor sections will be counted as soon as a roof is up since it will already be walled off by the adjacent structures. The big question mark is if the areas that still don't have columns or even footings can be done in the next 11 weeks. So what's your guess on that? I'd love to hear that below. So now let's take a look at the brand new tracker for the area west of the highway, the potential Starlink building, perhaps. I've been holding off on this because there just isn't much to show, but here you go. I used the math from Jeff Roberts' video where he concluded the site is 400 feet by 2,560 feet, and I overlaid it with a grid of 10 by 64 blocks. That is, using the Jeffstimate. The site prep is half done. I mean, it's level, it has aggregate laid down. We can see what the foundation shape is going to be. It looks ready for any final GeoPeer work before we actually get into digging the footings. So once the GeoPeer work is done, the site prep will hit 100%, but we don't know how much of that remains to be done. So this building is 10% done. I know that may sound high, but considering the amount of time it took to get this far, it appears consistent with other math I've done that so far held up pretty well. And remember, it's not 10% done by how much is, you know, how many dollars are spent or how much is attached. It's by time. This is 10% of the time it should take, roughly. And it's been about a month, so that would be about 10 months. Yeah, that sounds about right. The Project Bobcat building on the other side, the far east of the property, remains untrackable. Since we can't see what the footprint is, we can't see how big it's going to be, it's just too rough to count. But as soon as it's ready, I'm ready. So what did I miss or misunderstand? Share your comments or bust my chops as needed in the comments below. And yeah, stay tuned, uh, stay juicy, and I can't wait to hear from you clever robots on or before Friday, because that is my birthday.